Howdy folks and welcome to the Maelstrom Arena guide with the cheap Sork. You can find this build on this channel. This is an easy and extremely effective build. Now this is by no means a perfect run. In fact uh, I haven't been here since the update that uh, introduced the perfected versions of weapons. I just farmed the Inferno stuff and bow and never came back. What I would highly recommend uh, is you taking a quest when you enter because it allows you whenever you need to leave or um, you just become frustrated. When you come back you start when you finished. So this is the first arena and you want to keep by this red bush. This is where the enemies spawn. It's one of the spawn points. Now, this is the most easiest arena of them all. Um, I would like to talk about, about some, some things that you should watch out for. Things like um, archers, spellcasters, Basically, ranged enemies are your main priority in this arena. That's what will kill you. It's not the dude with uh, the two-hander, it's the Frost Mage. So, in this round, basically what you need to avoid is the red circle that will start following you. Uh, kill the ranged enemies. Uh, this is fairly easy to, to, to do this stage. A couple of Daedrods, a couple of Clan Fears. Nothing really too scary. Now, as I mentioned, this is by no means um, a perfect run. This is not going to be a flawless run. But I wanted to showcase this particular run because, first of all, it was my very first run after a very long time. And... Uh, so this will kind of showcase uh, the capabilities of this build, right? And the second thing is that there are several ways uh, how to mess up your run, how to, how to die. And uh, some of them are extremely annoying and uh, there are ways to avoid those and I will showcase those. Uh, in this run, in this particular run. So once again, this is just a simple arena, nothing really too dangerous. This is the last mini boss before the final boss. Easy, right? Now this is the last boss. Um, Nothing too fancy. Uh, the thing to remember is that those ads that he will call out can be extremely annoying. And uh, if you don't kill them, they will multiply, basically. So you will have to deal with several of them. They die pretty quickly, so it shouldn't be that much of an issue. Right, and he's dead. Now, after each round, I highly recommend uh, repairing your gear. There it is. Now, in this second stage, where you want to be is right across the area where you enter. Over there, basically. The reason being that all the mini bosses first of the main bosses uh, will spawn here and there's this healing sigil here and these blades can be extremely annoying especially if you don't watch your critical surge and uh, your health may go down rapidly now these blades apply bleed so I highly recommend trying not to stack those bleeds because they do stack. So this is one of the first uh, mini bosses. 
well not one of the first but the first uh, of the mini bosses again this is where the first final boss spawns so this is the best place basically it's right across the entrance this is the pl best place for you to be there's the healing sigil if you feel like you need uh, healing or you struggle you can use that um, not much to do here or not much to see basically this is the most important uh, or most, most annoying thing in this arena are those blades oh one thing I forgot to mention um, do not go to the middle because there's a shock field you get knocked down knocked back um, stunned and uh, it hurts right you can see the shock field in the middle now there is a way to shut down the blades as you can see the green lever there you can activate that and it will shut down the blades for uh, if I'm not mistaken 10 seconds so if you feel like you need to you can use that but uh, it's only temporary and once you get used to the dancing around those blades you should be fine but they do hurt those blades don't get me wrong uh, if you see those guides on YouTube oh you don't have to worry about these blades oh yes you do but it's not that hard to avoid those right so this is the first of the mini bosses when he crouches he becomes invulnerable until he activates again basically and they circle around so to speak so this, that was the second boss now the third one will pop up and after some time uh, he will crouch become shielded and you will have to go to the next one and the next one now one thing to avoid is the boss one of the bosses uh, when they become shielded they have a slight electric field uh, around them it doesn't hurt much doesn't hurt much but if you're low on health uh, it can be somewhat annoying now if you struggle with resources you can actually heavy attack the bosses that are shielded and it will restore your resources but the main issue here is to avoid the heavy attacks this conal attack that the boss just did and uh, the blades basically there was a bit of a lag there this is not really that hard right repair your gear again this is me just checking what the tristat potion is that's the best potion to use in this uh, arena because you will need stamina so try start potions now what I use the island that I use in this stage is the one right uh, here because that's the main boss and that's the door or gate it comes out of now the thing here to watch out for are the stranglers because the water is spicy you see there's a strangler there so if you kill uh, if you see that kill it as soon as possible because they tend to pull you across the, the, the water and the water hurts so if you're low on health it may kill you right so if you see a strangler kill it now this is the first of the mini bosses um, enemies here you can basically heavy attack to death it's not really that big of a deal the main issue are the stranglers and these red areas they they do hurt so 
avoid those you can stay pretty much the whole fight on this island and uh, basically everything comes uh, towards you if you see a strangler you can heavy attack and kill it with uh, from this island now there are again sigils that you can use um, but like literally you don't need any of those now this is the second of the mini bosses watch out for the heavy attack um, nothing too fancy now strangler and kill that one again but this this arena can be at least for me this is the most annoying arena of them all now people struggle with the fifth ice arena or the seventh poison arena this is the most annoying for me because things can get pretty chaotic uh, and you can be overwhelmed by enemies aoe's stranglers the water is electric and so it for me this is the most difficult arena and usually when i die if i die i die here right not in this run surprisingly but this is one of the mini bosses again and after this one it's the last boss time Now she comes out of that gate. The most important tactic is to always keep moving in a circle around the boss. Always. Do not stop moving because when she screams, you see it there, it will stun you and it deals a lot of damage. And if you get hit by a spellcaster or a, a Lamia or whatever, it may very well kill you. And this is where I usually die right she's not that hard to kill if you use the storm archonach ultimate she goes down pretty quick and she's dead now again always repair your gear The next stage is fairly easy, but this is one of the reasons that I wanted to showcase this particular run. Um, surprisingly, pets die in this arena and they die a lot, as you will see. Now, what you can do uh, to prevent that is to use a lot of your shields, hardened ward. Um, but yeah, uh, as you will see, the pets die. Now in this arena, the most important thing is that Dwarven small thingy, I believe it's called Theodolite, that one, it's called Clockwork Sentry now. Okay, so what that does, when you don't kill it, it goes towards the middle. Uh, you will see that in a minute it goes towards the middle um, sits there for a second then it becomes shielded and starts shooting some lightning aoe at you which can hurt and are pretty annoying so try to look out for those sentries those dwarven spheres and uh, kill them they pretty much die uh, like easy. They don't have much health. See, I missed that one and uh, now it's shielded. To kill it, you have to break through the shield. The shield is not really big, but it can be annoying. Right, so that's the first mini boss. Uh, watch out for the AOEs. That's another Dwarven Sentry. Interrupt the healers because they're annoying. 
Now, my pet is still alive, which will not last for long. These dwarven spiders can be pretty annoying because they swarm uh, and they zap you with some lightning and it can be annoying. Now, these big dwarven spheres uh, what you have to look out for are those uh, AOEs that you just saw. They hurt a lot. Now that's another one of those sentries. Uh, these spiders are just annoyance. If you keep moving, um, you'll make your life a lot easier. Now this is one of the mini bosses. Right. And again, I missed one of those uh, dwarven spheres, those little ones. Now, this is the last mini boss before the main one. And uh, yeah, there's another one. To kill this uh, little dwarven sphere, you have to break through the shield, which is not really big, but it's annoying. Now, now you'll see the pet die very quickly. Right. What you have to keep in mind that when the spider boss walks, stand uh, beneath or walk with the spider. When the spider boss stops, run around uh, because it will start shooting. And as you can see, the pet is dead. It will shoot these AOEs. Now what I do when the boss stops, I run around this whole room and take all the sigils. They will make your life a lot easier because they increase your damage, survivability and reflect all the projectiles. So you don't really have to care about anything then. And uh, there it is. Now as you can see, the pet died really quickly. So this is one of the disadvantages of a pet build. I have a build on my channel and in that build I showcase a no pet option. So I usually run with that one. Now this arena is the most hated one of them all. Reason being uh, the water is icy, it will kill you in seconds. Uh, there is a troll that spawns every now and then, runs to these islands and uh, breaks them. And uh, the archers and ice mages are extremely annoying. I will die here because um, I will not take care of, uh, yeah, that's the troll. You have to interrupt this or kill him, uh, kill it before um, the troll breaks the ice. Now, I will die because I will not take care of the ice mages, which will be my mistake. <clears throat> and um, it's unfortunate, but this happens. And that's uh, why, again, one of the reasons I wanted to showcase this particular run to, to show you basically what to avoid or how to prevent dying because I've done this arena hundreds of times, uh, but like occasionally I still die because I do silly things, right? So this boss can be annoying because uh, there is a bug with the animation and sometimes you see like the flurry stabbing sound but you don't see the animation and then you just die and uh, that's it right so this can be annoying now again archers a priority <clears throat> These two are annoying and as you could see, I forgot to check on the troll and the troll destroyed the island. It's not a big deal 
uh, as long as you can have at least one, you, you're fine, because every round uh, the islands will recover or reappear. Again, kill the troll or interrupt. This is uh, a mini boss. Now, this next round uh, is the most tricky, in my opinion, in this stage. Because these two, um, you will have this setup that you have here um, Nereid, Ice Archonach, and the Archer twice. So this was the first time, now this is the second time, well not this, but there will be a second time, and uh, those hurt, the Archonach and the Archer, they hurt. So Frost Mages again, priority, and there it is, narrates Archonach, Archer, Spellcasters, it's just annoying. What you can do is take the shield because the shield sigil reflects basically all ranged attacks back to the attacker which means the archers can pretty much as you could see there the archer died uh, they can kill themselves which is always nice now with this uh this round what you have to look out for is the heavy slam attack and kicks. Kicks are freaking annoying. Those giants just kick you and uh, it kind of knocks you back and it's just annoying. Now, <clears throat> there's a mage there, right? Narrates are annoying as well. Um, this AoE conal attack it's easy to avoid. Nothing too special. Right, interrupt the the troll. Yeah, fierce because why not? And now this is the many boss of this round. So you can see I'm prioritizing the mage, not the boss. Really, the ranged enemies in this arena, those are the ones that will kill you. Most of the time. If you know the mechanics or what to do, um, it's the ranged uh, attackers, spellcasters, ice mages. Now this is where I die. I always start this round on the island where I uh, first entered this this uh, stage because this one has the speed sigil. The next one uh, in front of me has the healing sigil. But what I need in the end is the shield and damage sigil. <clears throat> the thing is, the boss will break um, the island after a certain period of time and she can actually break the last island if you don't kill her fast enough. Right? So you want to save the damage and ultimate uh, to the end. Now, I started looking at uh, different things and this is why I died. I saddle as you can see. Right? So ranged enemies will kill you. Now let's do this again. And do remember that people are watching. <laughs> so once again, um, the boss 
will uh, break uh, the, the island after some time. So you will see like a red AOE. Um, that's the cue to get out of the island because if you're on the island when she breaks it, uh, you will die. Kill the archers, kill the enemies. And that was it. She's basically enraged and she's gonna break the island. Now kill the troll because if you leave the troll and the troll breaks one island, you're basically done. You will not finish this, right? So do not try to nuke the boss because the archers and the, the arts basically are health based. What I mean by that is that if you nuke her down too quickly, she will spawn a lot of enemies at like at once, right? She will skip stages and just spawn four, five, six uh, archers, ice mages at, at the same time, which will just, that was the AOE again. And uh, take the shield, take the axe, which gives you more damage. Every ranged attack is being reflected back. You have some resistances as well. Use the Destro ultimate to melt uh, all the enemies because there's more of them. And she's dead. This wolf um, didn't know that. And uh, that's about it. That This is the most feared stage of this whole maelstrom arena now this next one is mechanic heavy i would say now as you can see the obelisks right uh, some of them are webbed some of them like the, the one in the middle is clear so what you want to do is look out for Horvers. When you see a Horver, that's the most important thing over here. There's the Horver. What you want to do is, yeah, that. You take the Horver to the webbed obelisk, kill it, and that will deweb the obelisk, right? And you want to have at least two dewebbed obelisk obelisks uh, at all times because <clears throat> when the spider mechanic comes like little tiny spiders that you can or you think you can kill them because they're little right these ones you cannot kill them and as you can see there is one obelisk uh, that's being lit that's where you want to stand because those spiders are afraid of lights and they will just go away. You cannot kill them. Well, you can, but it will take a lot of time and they will just simply annihilate you. Right, ranged enemies again, the biggest priority. Uh, let the scam do the work. Um, not really too hard and when you unweb all five obelisks this happens everything gets stunned uh, by the way that web spinner web spinner uh, nearby is a little spider that will come like appear every now and then from underground and he will start webbing the unwebbed obelisks because he's there just to annoy you right you think you have plenty of obelisks available when the spiders the little ones come and all of a sudden you realize you know these ones that you don't so watch out for the web spinner horver kill the horver now it's really important for you to get used to the horror mechanic early on in this stage because when the spider boss comes the big one uh, in the end you see that's the web spinner 
right? I miss it. And oh, it's like, oh shit, now, now I realize that. So when the big spider comes in the end, if you miss two, you die. Two horrors. You can miss one, but if you miss two, you will basically die. Because the boss gets enraged and will just uh, kill you. You have to stun the boss. Or, or, um, nuke the boss. Like, there are people, um, and you can find it on YouTube, like World Records and that kind of stuff, uh, people that can nuke the bosses in like 10 seconds they don't care but this build doesn't have the power to do that uh, so you kind of need to follow the mechanics which is also great because you learn them and even those um uh, world record holders um they they still had to learn this arena learn the mechanics before they could do world records runs. So, yeah. Again, web spinner, kill that one. Um, now, when the horror, as you could see a couple of seconds ago, when the horror dies and it's not near the obelisk, you will have to throw the goo that it leaves behind, basically, on the obelisk. Right, again, web spinner. These lurchers are annoying. Uh, avoid their kind of heavy attack because it's annoying. And it can stun you and it hurts, right? So I missed the horror there. Uh, I missed the goo, so I don't have all the obelisks, which I could have. Uh, again, web spinner. Now, this is where I get my stun and finish the mini boss. Now, I'll kill these. Um, this is basically the, the round just before the last boss. The mini boss. At the end of the round will be two lurchers, which can be fairly annoying because they hurt, <clears throat> they stun, and uh, yeah, you've got spiders, you've got, yeah, there they are, you've got two lurchers, so this can be annoying. Now, the boss comes. What you have to look for is the mini version of the boss, which will appear after a couple of seconds. The reason is there's the horror. You always have to be on the lookout for the horror. Now, the reason <coughs> for the mini version uh, to look out for that is that there she is. She stuns you. Well, not stuns, she snares you. And you will be slower and slower and slower and slower. It's just annoying. Now, as you could see, the red AOE, the boss was getting enraged, right? <coughs> Pardon me. And uh, if you don't stun her like this, you will eventually die. Um, what you die to or will die to is called spit, which is just fairly annoying. You don't even see it and all of a sudden, bam, you're dead. And uh, after you've stunned the boss, a lurcher comes out, but she's like almost dead. Yeah, good to go. Now, this is... <clears throat> Well, the next arena is one of those two most dreaded ones in this um, arena. And again, there will be a reason why I wanted to showcase this particular run. 
Now you've got two pools, one here, one there, <clears throat> and the flowers that will pop out, there it is. When you get close, they will kind of explode and you will get poisoned, which will kill you in like three, four seconds. What you have to do is get to one of those pools <clears throat> to kind of cleanse yourself. Right, there it is. Yeah, I'm being poisoned. So. Now, again, the most important thing to kill archers. What you have to look out for in this arena, uh, especially with the archers, is this, this conal poison attack. This uh, poison attack deals practically, I don't know if it's almost the same or the same amount of damage. You will die if you stand in the cone pretty quickly. Uh, it deals basically the same damage as the flowers, but it's not purgeable. You can purge the flowers, but you cannot purge the conal acid spray attack. Another thing to look out for are these um, venom, venom colors. When they appear, your screen will go green. See the conal attack, get out of there. Uh, and this is another attack, uh, which you have to either interrupt or kill the archer before he does the attack because that's a one shot now venom caller again they appear on these round platforms uh, around the room there's four of them and what they do they make all the flowers explode at once as you could see there was like minefields all over the place so when your screen goes green uh, look for the venom caller <clears throat> and kill it. Basically there's gonna be one very soon, there it is, to the right of me, there it is. <clears throat> now these pools are rechargeable, so to speak, so if you use one the next round it will be available again. Now Venom Caller again, <coughs> pardon me, um, these little Kwama thingies, they don't do much damage, Archers, that's what hurts here, right, there's two Archers and there will be a, again, Conal attack, there will be a, the next round, well, this round, but the next phase of this round uh, will have three archers at the same time. And what you want to do is take the shield sigil uh, then. Now, this is a mini boss, right? You want to absolutely avoid those circular AoEs that you saw there. You want to absolutely avoid his uh, breath lightning attack, right? So kill it and this, right? Again, a venom caller. Now the flowers are <clears throat> especially annoying uh, because they ru ruin flawless runs, and it will happen in this run. It will because when you get to the last boss. Um, there is a mechanic basically where uh, two Argonian menders appear. You have to kill one of them. And uh, again, green screen, green venom caller. So this is the part where I take the, the shield because there are three archers and it can be really annoying. So let's, you know, uh, use the shield and uh, be safe. Now, the flowers, they ruin flawless runs because when you kill one of the Venom um, Argonian Menders, the other one uh, pops like a shield bubble and you have to stay inside uh, while the boss is enraged and screams. Uh, but the flower can 
And you will see that the flower can um, appear right inside your shield. And uh, if you go out, you will die to the scream. You can interrupt uh, the boss, um, which will prevent you from dying to the scream, but the boss will enrage and basically all his attacks will be one shots. Uh, or you will just die to the poison. So this is where you'll see it. So I'm poison, I'm using this. Right, the Argonian Menders are there. I'm going to kill that dude over there. Well, uh, or not. <laughs> but this wasn't the, the dying to the flower under the shield yet. This was just uh, me being stupid. Right, uh, you can deliberately explode those flowers if you wish to, like if they're positioned on the wrong place, but you have to get out of there pretty quickly or you get poisoned. So, once again, here we go. Um, damage the boss, again, Argonia Mender spawns, right, kill this dude. Find the other one, right? Get under the shield and have a flower pop up right next to you under the shield, as you could see there, right? And I'm dead. So this is what ruins basically people's um, flawless runs. And it can be extremely frustrating because you've spent like half an hour, 40 minutes getting here and now you're dead and if you want the flawless run you have to do it again well <clears throat> so once again another thing that you <clears throat> have to watch out for a crushing shock that's what i'm using as a main spammable do not use it when the boss is enraged and screams and you are under the shield because it will interrupt the boss and like i said uh, basically all his attacks will become one shots it is survivable but um like why make your life harder than it is just heavy attack the boss some uh, wall of uh, elements Again, a poison flower right next to the shield, because why not? Uh, heavy attack the boss uh, and make sure your scamp uh, does not kill the Argonian Mender because you're standing in the Mender's shield and you don't want it to go away. So just heavy attack the boss. Um, easy right so again Argonian Mender there's a Venom Caller at the same time right kill one of them get under the shield um, hope that the flower doesn't uh, spawn right next to you and uh, kill the boss Right, and there's a venom caller there somewhere, but I just don't care. The boss is almost dead. There we go. Now, the next one is fairly easy. There's only one thing you have to look out for in the next stage, and uh, that thing is called Remora Kaingald. It looks the same as any other Daedra kind of uh, enemy in here, well, almost. Uh, but what the Kaingal does is they spin their stuff above their heads and they shoot fireballs at you. And that will kill you fairly quickly. Now, these are not, that's the Kaingal, you see? He's not doing it now, so those are the priority. And they're 
kind of hard to to distinguish between normal like these Gandrakins uh, because they look the same except the kind god has a, a hoodie on that's how you recognize now when the minibus comes you have to kill one of these crystals and I'm like I did I kill the crystal or did I not kill the crystal here uh, this this is a bug it can happen it's like uh, the crystal's dead but it looks like it's not right so I was kind of confused there um, but yeah you have to kill those uh, well not crystals obelisks uh, because the mini boss will be invulnerable that it is still whole uh, no idea what's happening it's a bug now this is another kind god Yeah, that's the mechanic. That's what you want to avoid. So either interrupt or kill the kind god before they can uh, kill you. Uh, little shocks. You don't care about those. Um, these Gandrakins are just healers, right? They don't do much damage, but they're freaking annoying because they heal either themselves or mini bosses or the kind gods. And yeah, there's a. Uh, it's this obelisk again, but this time it will disintegrate. So, what you want to prioritize here are those stupid flame matronachs because they are just annoying. And uh, then surround the boss, keep your distance, you've got the damage. Avoid that if you can, the conal flame attack, they, it hurts. So, yeah. Now this is a fairly easy round, just a couple of enemies, there will be a kind god. This, this stage is, to be honest, one of the two easier ones, right? Uh, the first one and this one is, th those are the, the easiest ones. And the last one. Now, I know it sounds ridiculous, there's a kind guy, just interrupt. I know it sounds ridiculous, and I was stuck on the last boss for a very, very long time when I was learning this arena. Now, nowadays, I can tell you that it's as easy as the first one. Right. I know it sounds ridiculous, but for me, when I get there, especially when I was doing all the uh, trying for the flawless runs and stuff like that, when I get to the last stage, um, I'm, I'm home. Right? I don't worry about dying anymore because the last boss, it seems like when I did it for the first time, I thought like no this this cannot be done this literally this last boss cannot be killed right and I was I was looking at the guides and I did all the guides told me to do and I thought this boss cannot be killed but now it's for me it's as easy as the first one now this is a uh, the last mini boss before the last like the final boss and she can be annoying because she has chains, will chain you, and drop the standard. She's a DK. And the standard hurts a lot. So, avoid that. Kill her. Now, this last boss, she is very, very slow. And you have all three obelisks to kill, right? That's how slow she is. You can literally walk and get away from her, right? So you have to kill three obelisks because she's invulnerable. She doesn't take any damage, right? That's the third one. Drop your ultimate if you can, right? And do damage. Now, there's a, our friend Kangalt, uh, which meant I had to focus the kind guard instead of the boss 
you can kill the boss in one go and I almost died here because why not uh, but if you take the healing sigil it will just regenerate your health like crazy now you have to watch out for the flame attacks like flame walls and stuff because they stun they apply a burning dot on you so it's annoying and uh, well I forgot to kill this crystal and uh, just kill the boss right I I will not kill the boss in this moment um, and again I this is me almost dying because I am too overconfident I do not keep my buffs up which is uh, a mistake that the majority of players do and uh, I'm just simply too cocky so do not repeat my mistakes right so there it is the boss is dead don't forget to repair your gear and uh, the easiest one easiest round of them all or stage what you have to look out for in here are the white ghosts you don't want to touch those because they uh, apply a frost damage you know so what you want to take are the gold ghosts you take three of those you will receive a synergy prompt if you activate synergy you stun everything in the room basically and i highly recommend not activating the synergy immediately wait for the daedroth the crematorial guard right i have to use the food again because i forgot so now the synergy is ready but don't use it immediately wait for this guy that's him uh, the reason being that he's got a flame attack and you do not want uh, the flame attack on you right the fire breath the tactic how to avoid it uh, is basically to walk around him like hug him literally walk right next to him and walk around he will turn towards you or keep turning towards you but you basically walk faster than he turns so he will not hit you with the flame attack i will i think i will showcase that in this run right nothing too fancy here that's the daedroth i don't have the synergy and what i have to do is basically walk around him that wasn't a good showcase of that particular tactic uh, because the daedroth was kind of far away from me and it took some time for, for him to get to me right now that's the daedroth and this is what you do well I killed him kind of too fast but basically you hug the daedroth and walk in a circle around him that's it um, watch out for the ranged enemies if you see an archer raising uh, his bow and it starts going orange that's the taking aim mechanic just interrupt that or kill the archer this is like a mini mini boss fairly annoying but uh, you don't care about that 
uh, I usually use the spectral synergy for this dude, this Ogrim, because they're just annoyance. Right, but I was saving the synergy for the Daedroth. Always try to save the synergy for the Daedroth if you can, if you can. Because that is the most um, annoying feature, so to speak, of this round. Right, the Daedroth, Crematorial Guard. Now, what you have to look out for uh, in this round. Are there, uh, what are they? There it is, that's the dude, right? The slowly walking guys that will spawn at the edge of this circle of this area and start walking towards the middle. Because when they get to the middle, what they will do is they will start casting. And if I'm not mistaken, it takes 15 seconds. Uh, they cannot be interrupted. They only can be killed or stunned. If you have stun, you can use that. But you will eventually have to kill them because when the stun expires, uh, they will keep walking towards the center or just uh, if they're already there, they will just keep casting. And if you don't kill them before they finish, they will raise a big giant skeletal. You see, that's one of them being stunned by my scamp. They will raise a big giant skeletal dude from the middle. And it can be killed, the skeleton guy. See, now the caster is casting. And there's another one. So it can be killed, but You know, why make your life uh, harder, so to speak? So, always kill those. Now, they only appear in round four. Um, this is, yeah, this is the Spectral Synergy. I saved it for this Daedroth. There he is. Now, Titan, the best thing to do is take the shield because all you have to watch out for are these swiping attacks. Uh, he spits like fire at you, but as you could see, it gets reflected back to him. So basically, he helps you uh, with the damage. All right, again, get the white ghost. Ah, <laughs> don't get the white ghost. Uh, get the gold ghosts. <clears throat> and uh, you're getting close. Now, the mechanic uh, or the best tactic for the last boss is to save your ultimate, which I did not. Uh, I used it on the Titan, but to save the ultimate for the boss, uh, because if you get the boss down to 70%, he will port upstairs. As you can see, there's a ring uh, above my head. It's kind of barely visible at the top of the screen. When you get the boss to 70%, he will port up without spawning the Daedroth. If you don't, yeah, dodge this or block. Uh, if you don't, he will spawn a Daedroth, which you will have to kill. Interrupt this. And... Uh, see? There's the Daedroth. So, you've got one crematorial guard um, to deal with. After you've killed that, uh, there will be this uh, glowing platform. And a kind of ghost of... Uh, um, Uh, what is it called? Clan Fear. Yes, a Clan Fear Ghost will kind of follow you. You kill it, 
you put uh, by the platform you port upstairs you dodge his always keep an eye on the boss always because you want to when he does this he will heavy attack and it will throw a skull at you and you want to either block or uh, dodge it because it will knock you off this platform and there will be another Daedroth waiting for you downstairs <clears throat> which you will have to kill another ghostly clan fear to kill uh, by the platform to get upstairs which is annoying right so when he kind of does this and this wall appears stay behind the wall because this heavy attack heavy explosion will knock you off as well and once you've killed all three crystals you drop down now the most important thing is get the gold ghosts because interrupt this get the gold ghosts keep on damaging the boss don't worry about anything else get the gold ghosts because what you will do is you see there's the caster she's trying to uh, summon the skeletal thingy you either have to kill her or get the gold ghosts stun the whole room and finish off the boss right because even the boss gets stunned now i'm not going to kill the boss uh within the stun but if you just focus the boss dodge the mechanics avoid the day avoid the day droth there you go nice and easy and we get uh, a big chest of disappointment in the end you get your four transmit crystals and uh, well hey so that was it that was the maelstrom arena guides hope you enjoyed it and i thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time